Hope you're having a great day. Good afternoon. Today is a very special day on the Chabad calendar. And for that matter, on the Jewish world calendar. Because it is in this day 71 years ago that the Lubavitcher Rebbe of blessed memory assumed the leadership of the Chabad movement. Decimated by the Holocaust, the world Jewry and Chabad movement itself was at a tremendous fork in the road. And the Rebbe, through his devotion, leadership, light, warmth, optimism, and unconditional love for every single Jew and human being, literally lifted up the Jews from the ashes of the Holocaust. And today, Chabad is one of the greatest, if not the greatest or largest Jewish organization spanning nearly 5,000 centers on every continent, in every country, in every state. And its impact is far larger than that. Between campuses and all over the world, Chabad is synonymous with Judaism. How did the Rebbe do this? And of course, we always speak about the Rebbe's love. We speak about the Rebbe's tireless work, about his self-sacrifice. But there's something in this week's Torah portion that connects very strongly with the Rebbe's style of leadership and the Rebbe's vision of what it meant to inspire someone. We know the greatest moment when God split the sea for the Jewish people and after they crossed over and Pharaoh and his chariots and the Egyptians drowned, the Jewish people sang a song to the Almighty that we say every single day in our prayers and which I spoke about yesterday. And it begins by saying, Az Yashir Moshe of Yisrael. Thus did Moses and the Jewish people sing. And the rabbis ask, isn't Moses part of the Jewish people? Why is he singled out? And the rabbis tell us that because Moses took a leadership role in the singing of the song at the sea after the miracles that happened. And of course, like everything in Judaism, there's three opinions of what does it mean that Moses took a leadership role? One opinion Rabbi Akiva says, Moses sang, he began to sing, and the Jews would say, Ashir la Hashem, let's sing to God. And Moses would say the next verse, and they would say again, Ashir la Hashem, let's sing to God. So Moses sang, and the Jews confirmed. I mean, Eliezer comes, and he says a little bit different. I mean, Eliezer comes and says no. Moses would say each word verse by verse, and then the Jewish people would repeat verse by verse. So yes, Moshe said it first, but the Jewish people said each verse. And the third opinion of Rabbi Nechemia is that Moses, no. Moses just began the beginning. He gave the Jews the cue. And then the Jewish people sang afterwards. They continued the song. And the question is, what's the significance? What does it mean to us in our day-to-day -day life? What's the message here about leadership, about Judaism? And the Rebbe, one of his great talks, which really reflected who the Rebbe was and what his leadership was, says like this. The first opinion of Rabbi Akiva says, the Jews saw such miracles, they were in such awe of Moses' greatness and his leadership that they submitted to him. They were so in awe by him, they just listened to what he said and all they had to say is, yes, we confirm. And that was enough. The power of his spirituality, of his holiness, of the moment, the magnitude of the miracles allowed them to just bask in it and say, yes, Moshe, we confirm. But Rabbi Leaz says, that's not enough. In leadership submission, you go to a concert, you're the most amazing singer, you're in awe, but the moment you leave, it doesn't last. Rabbi Leaz says, that's not enough to inspire. You gotta create followers. He says, no, Moses told them what to say, he said it, but he instilled it with them that they should say the same words. He didn't just create people who were in awe, like sheep, but he created followers. Comes along Rabbi Nechemi and says, that's not enough. True leadership is when all you do is you give them the cue. Moshe put the goalposts for them. He told them, we're, this is what we got to get. And then the Jews on their own continued and did it. You see, these are three levels of leadership. How do we inspire? By submission, by awe, by creating followers, or by creating leaders. The Rebbe, in his first talk, when he accepted the leadership of Chabad, said the famous 
Hasidic discourse of Basi Lagani, which outlined the goal and the map of what the Rebbe wanted to accomplish in bringing God's oneness and holiness and divinity into this world, that the world should express godliness on its own. And the Rebbe said clearly in his first talk that I'm telling you what I want to do, but you have to do it. The Rebbe didn't just create leaders, followers, the Rebbe created leaders. I told you I'm reading this book from um, Yehuda Avner, who was the personal assistant to four prime ministers. The book is called Prime Minister, The Prime Ministers. Here you got it. I think the second time I'm reading it, I definitely recommend it if you haven't read it. But in the book, he writes how Menachem Begin came to the Rebbe before he went to meet Carter. And then the Rebbe promised him that he would send back, uh, Menachem Begin promised the Rebbe that he would send back Yehuda Avner to fill the Rebbe in on how the meetings went. And when Yehuda Avner came, he spoke to the Rebbe and he looked at the Rebbe and he says, tell me, you know, the, the awe of, the, of your followers towards you, what's going on here? And the Rebbe says, let me tell you what my role is. He says, you ever see a candle burning? You have the wax, a lump of wax, and you have a wick that goes through it. Until you light it, it's two separate things. There's a, a wick and there's a lump of wax. Only when you light the candle does it suddenly become a candle that's burning, not just wax and a wick. Says the Rebbe, the body is the wax. The wick is the soul. And what I try to do is light the candle with the fire of Torah for every single Jew. He was in awe. He was listening to the Rebbe. This was 2 p.m. after an hour of a, of a conversation. And then the buzzer rang because there were people waiting to go. The Rebbe would sit and take audience until 3, 4 a.m. And as he's leaving, he turns to the Rebbe with this awe, but also like with a smirk, and he says, Rebbe, did you light my candle? The Rebbe looked at him and the Rebbe said, I gave you the match. No one can light anyone's candle. I gave you the match and you have to light it yourself. That was the Rebbe's vision of how to inspire the world. You see Chabad rabbis all over the world and each and every single Jew. And the Rebbe wanted us not to follow, but to lead by conviction, to be inspired enough that the influence should become ours and the passion should become ours. As a young child, I grew up Many of you have been to my home, I've seen some of the pictures where I'm standing right next to the Rebbe. I was a little child. And the Rebbe always wanted the children next to him. And I remember my father would tell me, the Rebbe would speak long discourses in Yiddish. And I didn't understand, I was a young kid, my father would tap me to listen. Sometimes I wanted to go out and play hopping tag with the kids or catch or get some Shabbos party. And my father says, stay. Because even if your body's not here now, your soul's hearing and it's absorbing. And later in life, impact you. May Hashem give us to each and every one of us be a leader of inspiration, of warmth, of guidance of Judaism. And on this day, let us rededicate ourselves to the Rebbe's mission of inspiring every Jew and the world alike to make this world a place that becomes a reflection of God's unity. A place that allows for redemption, for the Messianic era, for the times of Mashiach. May it happen speedily in our days. Do an extra mitzvah today. In this special honor, wrap, fill in, commit to light Shabbos candles, study Torah, give charity, kosher, mezuzah. There's so many special mitzvahs. We're happy to help out in any way we could to allow you to continue on your own spiritual journey as your own leader, walking forward towards a place where God wants you to go.